Away in a Manger. Well, the way I sang it as a child was, Bless all the dear children in thy tender care, and fit us for heaven to live with you there. Do you believe there's a real heaven? Years ago, I would meet people who would say, no one's ever been there and come back to tell us it exists. Well, you know what, that's not true. Right here on this program, in recent months, we've been moved by guests who visited the heavenly realm and been sent back, and you know, they're all on a mission. Ron and Glenda Petty have a story to tell. The title of their book says it all, Heaven is Real. Welcome folks from Lufkin, Texas. Right, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Just love to hear that draw. Now, mm -hmm. there is a lot of drama in this book, Long Before You Die, Ron. And uh, I'd like to take you back to 21 and 24 mm -hmm. when you met. Oh, yes. <laughs> and okay. that was kind of special. It was very special. Um, it was just really supernatural, honestly. I had just, I was just finishing my last semester of college. Um, and Ron came to town to visit his sister. In fact, he had a broken leg. He couldn't work. And, and uh, you, so you, to pass the time, you, couldn't, you were off work, so you drove out to West Texas. Uh, I was from West, West Texas. He was from East Texas, uh, an, a good eight hours away. And so you came. Your sister arranged a blind date. We better say her name. Yeah. Nell, Nell. if she ever sees this, <laughs> I know she takes a lot of credit for this, Ron. Right. What did she do? She arranged a blind date, and she said, Ron, I don't want you drinking. I don't want you uh, using profanity. Which you never did, anyway. Which I never did, anyway. But, but smoking, okay. Smoking. Okay, she said I, I think the choice of movie was important, too. Oh, yes, yes, yes. 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 Choice of restaurant was important. Hey, yeah. every little detail is was my sister's. You I mean, were on your best behavior. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been so good. <laughs> and, and Glenda, you, you were taking this as a, an appointment from God. I, I was because she had also grilled me. Um, she had given me a heads up that this was maybe uh, this was a chance to witness to this boy. And uh, I thought I would never see him again. So, um, and, and that's sad because I thought at age 21, you'd think it would just be something easy to do, but I was nervous about that. But I thought, well, if I just make a fool of myself and blow it, well, I'll never see him again, so it's okay. Uh, but that night after the movie, uh, I just said a few words, just kind of led that in, and he, he was just so ready to receive the Lord. You yeah. say in the book, Ron, that you were so convicted by the challenge about your faith because you'd been raised with all the right stuff. I think you right. gave your heart to the Lord at 12. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but you'd been somewhere else in your lifestyle. You welcomed this conviction that came through Glenda's words. words. I did. It, it was it's almost like I was begging for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yet, you know, I, I wasn't begging. I was wanting it. Uh, you were. You were ready. I was ready. You're ready. He, his sister and brother-in-law had really lived out, uh, the sister is about 10 years older, and he admired their lifestyle and their marriage, and they had three young boys, three young children, and you admired them, and you wanted that for yourself, but you didn't know how to transition from your, your single life of party life, whatever, mm -hmm. to, to that, and, and you were ready. And so he was so ready. And, and you were changed, so yes. changed. Yes. A new creation right there on, on the spot. And how, how long did it take for us to get to um, <laughs> this wonderful day? <laughs> right. Look at these kids here. Right. Mere weeks. We went from March to end of May. We had to schedule it around college graduation and then uh, getting him back enrolled in college in uh, the East Texas area. So it was a matter of just logistics. So yeah, very mere weeks. Uh, 37 years ago, oh, <laughs> so okay. it has lasted. The, it's made the test of time. <laughs> a test is the operative yeah. word here mm. because you would move into, uh, you know, we just have to hit very quickly on some of the challenges, none of which you could have anticipated. Right. Glenda, so, why so don't right. you start us off? I mean, infertility right out of the gate. Right. 
Um, right. 1978 <laughs> was a calamitous year. Right. Uh, we had transferred um, from one small town as a Sears manager. He, he finished his degree in marketing and management, got on with Sears. We were transferring from one town to another, and uh, Ron began to have headaches. And the headaches were worse on the weekends. So immediately they thought, well, it's caffeine withdrawal. You're, you're drinking lots of coffee at the store and you're not, you know. We were looking for simple answers. Mm -hmm. Well, there were no simple answers. Uh, the neurologist, uh, we had CAT scans, they couldn't decide. It wasn't until they compared the CAT scans with second and third opinions that they found spinal fluid was not draining. Mm -hmm. And so ultimately that led to a quick surgery of a shunt uh, uh, it's kind of common now, but you know. It's, it was plumbing back then. Pl well, it still is. <laughs> it still <laughs> is. It just drains that spinal fluid from the center of your head, just somewhere in your body. And it, those early days, it was down in his lower abdomen. Well, then there would be shunt revisions. There would be uh, problems with that. So uh, the original surgery was in 78. We had, had many revisions in 81. And then in 82, the entire, this foreign object in his brain, uh, there was a, an infection. So the entire thing had to be replaced. Well, then in, in the surgery of removing the first one and putting in the second, uh, there was a lot of bleeding. And they took an x-ray before they inserted the new tubing, and it looked great. But we would not know until days later that they had put that brand new tubing right into a massive blood clot that oh. had not shown up on x-ray. And so the, the neurosurgeons felt the surgery was successful. They were getting ready to send him home. And then during the weekend, there was great swelling. And now we know this wasn't swelling. This was spinal fluid collecting. And the surgeons felt they, without seeing him again, right that, at that time, they thought they had hit a gland and that was causing swelling. Well, it wasn't until Sunday morning on their Sunday morning rounds that they found him just near death. You got a phone call. Yes, I got a phone call. The Lord had already dealt with me the night before. Was it the night before that those words Absolutely. just were impressed oh. upon you? And, and your response, I think, Absolutely. was amazing. The night before, I, was, I, I just felt so hopeless. Of course, we were, I was 31, he was 33 at the time. We'd never gone through anything like this. Uh, this traumatic, even though it had all the brain surgeries already, but still, uh, I was crying out to the Lord, feeling that He was already gone. And I felt myself spiraling downward. Uh, it was the most depressing, frightening experience that I had because I've, I, I was angry, so angry with God. I felt like I was already a widow. I had a four-year-old and a four-month-old. Two little girls. Two little sweet girls. And uh, I was so angry. <clears throat> never, <clears throat> never in my life had I had this emotion. And suddenly I was absolutely arrested in that downward spiral. <clears throat> and I saw myself as a bitter old woman if I continued in that way, in that mindset. And I repented right then. And I said, God, I'm sorry. I will stay with you. Just take Ron and I'll stay with you. And in that moment, I heard audible voice inside my head so clearly say, he's going to be okay. I'm giving him back. And it was like cold water in my face. I, it was so sobering. My tears dried. I cannot even remember the next moment that I just fell asleep. And then six o'clock, the phone rang. I answered it. It was not a surprise. They were saying, come down, sign papers. I said, I'll be right down. They were doing surgery and they were not expecting Absolutely. good things. And I never saw him again at that point. Now you are about to take Ron quite a trip. Where did the guardian angel take over? Immediately. Uh, I didn't know he's my guardian angel until... Well. Let's just start back, but right. suddenly you were there. <laughs> I was in heaven immediately. Mm -hmm. I mean, when people say snap a finger, it's quicker than that. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. That's it's, right. That's right. So. 
is quicker than a twinkling of an eye. Mm -hmm. The eye twinkles many, many times many, a second. <laughs> many, many, many times a second. But in that instant, I was in heaven. I knew exactly where I was. That's the amazing thing. There's a large table. I walked to the table. I'm ready to go in. I knew where I was. That, that is rather remarkable. Really? But, but where you really were was not really inside heaven. No. We call it the foyer area. The, the foyer. Lack, the, the foyer, for lack of a better mm -hmm. term. What Ron experienced was kind of, here was a large table, a huge book, with a person standing behind the table. When I wasn't, I was allowed in, but I wasn't to stay. Mm -hmm. To turn a page of this book, the person behind the desk had to hold it with both hands and walk several steps to turn a page. This is one big book. One, it big, one book. big book. And, and you felt, and you said, I'm ready to go in. And he looked at the book. And my name wasn't there. Now that part really had me in a cold sweat. Yeah. Really? Because you were a, a true believer in Christ. That's right. 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 That's right. I said, have I been deceived all these years? <laughs> I mean, I was ready to strangle somebody. <laughs> and here I'm in heaven and I'm ready to kill somebody. <laughs> you became very irate. Yeah. But it's only because he falsely assumed that was the Lamb's Book of Life. That was not the Lamb's Book of Life. And we knew and you knew that it's inside heaven with the Lord. This is a different book. And now we felt like this is this was today's arrivals, whatever, but <laughs> I think the name of this book may be a book of remembrance. Like you would sign at a funeral. Ron's name was not there because he was not yet being remembered. Ah. He was not going to be going Able in. to stay. That's right, able to stay. Yeah. Now you just gotta tell us some of the, you heard a child's voice. We haven't talked about the stillbirth of your first son, right, Jason. Right. Our second child, we had Jennifer and then Jason, and he was stillborn at 33 weeks. And there was nothing wrong with that child. We just don't know what happened. Uh, this was three years later that Ron is in heaven. And what you did you hear? Yeah. I heard him playing in water. Now, with other children. With other children. Mm. And How did you know it was him? It's, it's, I'd never heard him, but yet I knew his voice. Uh, his I, voice was drawn out above the yeah, others. Yeah, his voice was uh -huh. drawn out. Um, so you tried to move. I tried to move to in closer to him. Mm -hmm. And this very large angel stepped in front of me and put his hand up, up in front of my face. It was a large hand. I mean, the palm of his hand covered my face. There was no... You know, I wasn't going to fight him. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he said something He to said, you. he's fine, now move back. Mm -hmm. A few words. You did not speak to him. No, I didn't. But he knew your thought exactly, yeah. and then he spoke to you. See, yeah. I didn't, yeah. yeah. So you did, you just I moved, moved back to the, mm -hmm. the entryway table. Mm -hmm. I, uh, we're mm -hmm. calling it that. We don't the have table. a... Right. And you know, Mara, just prior to that, Ron had heard noise, such noise, as if walking into a large auditorium, not able to understand any one conversation, but a the, lot hum, of people, the hum a lot of, of the crowd. Buzz. Just prior to that. And then you ask the, the, the angel behind the table, what is all this noise? And the angel said, don't you know? These are all intercessory prayers coming up on your behalf. I just think that's so amazing. Really? The, the Bible talks about prayers that rise like sweet incense before the Lord. Psalm 141, verse 2, Revelation 8, verses 3 and 4. As soon as I read that, I thought, wow, they're, yeah. they're, they're audible, they're, they're, they're visible. Yes, <laughs> yes, they're yes. And, and so he said, would you like to hear one? And, and you said, yeah. Out of probably being obnoxious. <laughs> I said, yeah, I want to hear one. <laughs> I want to find out who's praying so I can get back and shut him off. <laughs> you say, don't pray, I want to go in. Yeah. Uh, so at any rate, the angel said, would you like to hear one? And what was absolutely phenomenal, he didn't just let Ron hear it. Instantly, Ron was at the scene of the prayer. He was 
in the church building. And this was the Sunday morning. These were the phone calls I had made earlier that morning from the hospital. And people had gone to prayer. And they'd gone to prayer. And you saw them praying for you. And yeah, it was right. in the service from our former church where we had transferred from. Our very best friend was at the pulpit on the microphone. It, what he prayed, it, uh, I re remembered it word for word. It was a unique phrase. Yeah, unique phrase. And you remembered it clearly. And, you know, I said, I can't wait to get back to Port Vaca, Texas and quote him his prayer. <laughs> yeah. This is, you know, um, I'm glad there's a book. Um, <laughs> what felt like a lifetime uh -huh. was only a few weeks in right. reality. And, and, Ron, you say that experiencing God's love is what made all the difference. It was the biggest takeaway of all the, imp the impressive, incredible details. God's love is, is the takeaway for you. That's right. That's right. Now, we just have a couple of minutes, which just seems tragic, um, because there's so much to tell here. The book is Heaven is Real. Where is it available? Uh, really on our website is the most convenient way to find it. Which is? Which is, uh, it, I think they have it on the screen. It's rgministries.org. You have a ministry of prayer. I have, look at the testimonials I have here of people who've contacted you with all kinds of needs, many of them physical. Mm -hmm. You are dealing with physical fallout from both diabetes mm -hmm. and the brain surgery. Tell us, um, 10 years with no memory, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 10 years where you had to write down what car you drove that day and where you'd parked it. Right. <laughs> um, and you helped so much, Glenda, with the practicality of all that. Just many life changes. Your parents have four children today. Um, what, what are you dealing with today in your life and in your ministry? The same thing. <laughs> the, hey, people, we still get calls daily. Uh, and they'll, they'll say what they need. Or it's a prayer need. What they need prayer, what their prayer What they what need prayer, prayer for. Need for. Mm -hmm. And God it, has answered in stunning ways. And what's so amazing, I can look at Glenda was be a a, a, a model. model. Mm -hmm. I can, she's standing in front of me, and I can know exactly where they're, what the need is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we're dealing with someone on the on the telephone, in person, of course, if they're there, then that's so this good. This is a very special gift. Yeah, yeah. very yeah. special gift. I wish we had time to talk about the angel because he hung around for the whole time in intensive care and you thought everybody else could see him, yeah. but, but you couldn't. I tried to introduce him to everybody. And maybe the most important thing that we haven't said, and this, viewers who have heard Captain Dale Black mm -hmm. on this program, this is not the first time we've heard that you were impressed to go slow with this testimony, not to come back with a big, write the book, mm -hmm. to, to, to take the traveling road show, mm -hmm. tell everybody about your heaven experience. Mm -hmm. This happened in 1982. Mm -hmm. And you're really just unfolding mm -hmm. what the Lord brought back right. to, well, Dale Black said it didn't come back to his head, it came back to his heart. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Stunning similarities in these experiences. I've, yes, I so agree. Uh, Ron had a severely impaired memory for 10 years, but he clearly remembered heaven and anything spiritual. And it was not an Alzheimer's lack of memory. Uh, it was, he had good judgment. Uh, I don't, uh, the doctor the said your memory shot, but your judgment is good. Exactly, yeah. exactly. He had character, uh, it was wonderful. And then, uh, after his memory came back after 10 years, that's another miraculous story that we document, um, it took six years to write the book. And now the book's been out for 12, I'm sorry to say, but we constantly have fresh revelation mm -hmm. of everything that we've lived. And I feel like the revelation will never end. Well, this has just been a tantalizing uh, whew, taste. Thank you. Taste, a foretaste. Mm -hmm. Many people I've talked to who ha have had an experience like this have needed counseling after mm -hmm. because they don't want to be here mm -hmm. having tasted what God has prepared mm -hmm. for those who love Him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ron went through a two-week period of depression. 
Just two weeks. <laughs> just two weeks, thank goodness. And, and I told, and I would repeat what the angel had said, that it's not yet your time, your mission isn't complete, you're being sent back, I'm going with you. And, um, and, and, and I would say, and besides that, you have the children and I. Mm -hmm. Well, two weeks later, our very engineering, um, uh, very um, emotionless banker said the very same thing. Well, Ron, Lord sent you back, so you have to be here. Mm -hmm. And he snapped out of it. <laughs> and so we just had the two weeks of depression, and that was all. Well, thank you so much for what you've been able to share today. Uh, God bless you in the ministry. Very sweet ministry you have with people who, who need prayer, mm -hmm. believing prayer. And maybe you need prayer today. Maybe you're not sure about heaven being real. Maybe you've lost someone and you don't know what there is beyond this life. We'd love to share the story too. We'd love to pray with you. You can call the number at the bottom of your screen anytime.